Hi, I'm Monica Gifford with Moringa for Life and today I'm going to show you how we um, unearth our yearlings. So this is a, a Moringa tree, a seedling that has been planted last year and then it went through a winter, it went through the last winter. So these were um, produced by our, my daughter Mackenzie in um, Sonoma County. She was at Schoen Farm at the Santa, Santa Rosa Community College studying sustainable agriculture. So she uh, created this as her student project for us. So we have these that went through the winter and we do that because once Moringa goes through the winter it has a stronger root. And this enables us to be able to unearth it, cut the top off, and ship it. So these are available on our website. So I wanted to show you how it looks. So this is the root, is the stem from a previ the previous season. Sometimes when it comes up again, it'll be more than one um, shoot. But this was not um, cut. So sometimes if it gets cut, then when it comes again in the second um, year, it will have more shoots coming out of that base. So these are the pots that she had available to her. Normally we, we do it within a taller pot. Um, so I just kind of scrunched that a little bit to let the plant know it's getting some movement. And then we're just going to really gently ask it to come out. So everything is really slow, very gentle. And I'm just barely giving it a tug. And now I feel that it's, all, it's coming out. So there it is. So you'll see it has little feeder roots. Right? All these are little feeder roots it sends out. And this is the tap root. So I'm just really carefully teasing this off so that we just have the tap root and some feeder root. So we cut this top off and ship it. In the past I was you know getting a long box and shipping the top but it arrived with all the leaves off and people thought well I got a dead tree um, so it didn't really make any sense for us to ship it that way because people thought it was dead when it arrived. And so we just cut it and once it starts to grow again, when you plant that, it's going to send one or, I mean, two or more shoots out of there. And every time you cut this down, that's one of the amazing things about Moringa. It's so abundant and so generous. Every time you take, some, you take it gives. The more you take, the more Moringa gives. So every time you harvest, you can cut that all the way down and it'll just keep sending more and more shoots up for more leaf production. So in some of the areas where this is being grown, so you see these are all feeder roots. You know, in San Diego here, we're in Vista, California, our season begins around now. This year it was a little bit early because we had a lot of hot days in May. This is getting to be the middle of June. And so here, here is that beautiful root and it has a slight color of tan there that's an indication that it's gone through a winter otherwise this would be white and it would look like a radish in fact they call it horseradish tree because you can't smell it but I can smell this it smells like horseradish and that's where it gets this um, another common name it also tastes hot like horseradish if you eat it at this stage so it's just a shame to to sacrifice a whole tree for a couple of bites of horseradish. But that's what, you know, when people have this abundantly uh, and they don't know what else to do with it, that's one of the things that it can be used for. The root, however, is good for low blood pressure where the, um, the top is used for high blood pressure. So these are traditional uses and the opposite ends of this tree have opposite uses. So it's quite a unique unique plant. Every time I work with it, I just it's just amazing because there's so many things it can do for people. It has done for people. Over the years I have been witness to so many things amazing 
healings that people have had using this plant. So that's what it looks like and we would wrap that up with a damp paper towel and into some plastic plastic bag and transport it and you could and if these fall off or break off it doesn't matter at all this will grow just as well without those feeder roots and it'll send out more feeder roots as it's as it's growing so that's what a moringa taproot looks like